All right. So I'm going to talk about data center initiatives and programs for storage. Uh, my name is Mark Carlson. I work for Toshiba, and I wear a bunch of hats around the various industry associations. Um, so today I want to drill down into some of the storage interfaces that are being worked on, including NVMe, T10, and T13, some of the storage management uh, uh, standards that are emerging and are being deployed and adopted, and then uh, get into the form factors. So for storage interfaces, uh, these are being modified at the request of some of the hyperscalers. Uh, when you scale out to the size that these guys are trying to put clouds and whatnot together, uh, they, they run into things like tail latency. And tail latency is where you know, every so often you get like anywhere from two to 10 times the response rate uh, that you would normally. And you think, well, that doesn't happen very often, but it happens enough that uh, things are really disrupted in, a, in that environment. The other thing is drives are getting bigger and bigger all the time, you know, uh, 100 terabyte, 30 terabyte drives. And in order to make efficient use of those SSDs, you have to, you have to target those with multiple possibly competing applications all reading and writing into that same media. And so if we can eliminate the noisy neighbor problem, uh, that'll, that'll go a long way towards that. So it's not just uh, hard drives, but it's also SSDs. In the, in the NVMe uh, that uh, Carl was just mentioning, we've put in place something called IO determinism. And this divides up an SSD into like isolated smaller chunks called NVM sets. And then to order to prevent background tasks from interfering with the reads, the, there's an idea of windowing back and forth between predictable read latency mode and uh, writing and background mode or window uh, that allows the drive to catch up on some of the work. And then uh, inside the OCP storage group, we're working on some changes to T10 and T13 for, um, for things like fast fail, uh, and uh, maybe changing media from SMR back to PMR, back and forth, those, those kind of things. So um, <clears throat> do get involved uh, in some of those streams if you're interested in those aspects. So eventually, they'll make their way into T13 and T10. Uh, storage management. Well. Uh, management of storage devices also has issues uh, in a scale-out environment, uh, especially when you have to put little intermediate sort of agents that gather thing up, everything up from that one host, or maybe one rack, or maybe one pod, and then consolidate those up. You end up spending a lot on compute resources just to do the management of compute resources and management of storage. So to scale out better, uh, we want to push the, the storage management down into the actual devices. And that may, in some cases, mean the actual NVMe uh, device itself. Uh, NVMe has something called NVMe MI, which is used to manage uh, both in-band and out-of-band, those NVMe devices. Um, and then DMTF has a standard called Redfish. Uh, you'll see that a lot this week. That was on the main stage yesterday. And uh, Carl just had it on his slides. <laughs> so Redfish is a, a, really is a scalable way to do management. It really goes down to the actual component and pulls out even proprietary information and uh, brings it back for data center management to not just view, but make decisions on, uh, have telemetry, and so forth. And then SNEA has an extension to Redfish uh, uh, called Swordfish. And this is for sort of once you start aggregating the storage from multiple devices, whether it's in a JBOD or JBOF or a storage server or software-defined storage, uh, it allows you to view those sort of intermediary pools that are used before you allocate something off to an application. So that's the storage management stuff. 
The U.2 form factor has been around for a while, and uh, you'll see a lot of those out there on the show floor this week. Um, <clears throat> but for SSDs, uh, this is kind of limiting because those form factors were originally made for hard drives. And the original use case for solid state storage was to be a solid state hard drive, basically. Uh, but now, you know, we're talking about form factors that can a lot, be a lot more flexible. M.2 doesn't look like anything like a hard drive, right? And so bigger M2s, uh, carry cards with multiple M2s, those kind of uh, things are now possible. And you'll start seeing some of these drives be implemented, right? Uh, SNEA has a, a group called SFF, and, uh, and there was a sort of ad hoc group called EDSFF, which is Enterprise and Data Center Small Form Factor. They've made a number of new SSD form factors, and these have been standardized by SNEA SFF. And then lastly, there's, uh, there's JEDEC is working on something called NGSFF. <laughs> which is uh, more along the lines of the M2. And, it, and there might be something eventually called an M3 as well, but we're not quite sure on that. So you'll see a lot of these on the show floors. These are one you long form factors, and uh, you also hear them called rulers. But uh, it's an actual standard, uh, SNEA's SFF TA-1007 defines basically two Widths. If you go into the Intel booth, you can see a ruler that's, you know, uh, the, the thinner version. If you go into the Microsoft uh, Project Olympus booth, you'll see a thicker version. They're still the same length, they still have the same connector, uh, and, uh, the, but the, the wider one allows it to be a carrier card for multiple M2s as well. So that's pretty innovative there. Um, but uh, <clears throat> that should allow a lot more uh, sort of NAND chips be, to be put on a single device than what you get in a single M.2 or some of these other form factors. And uh, they've done some uh, evaluation of you know, how much heat can you dissipate through a 1U box and how you know, how much do you need for the power su supplies and fans and maybe a switch at the back end? So uh, I think this will get some traction. Uh, WeWin announced their version of this. Supermicro has a version of this. Uh, J. Boff. Uh, and then we've got the uh, Project Olympus coming along as well. Any questions on when you long? Okay. Well, we'll have questions at the end, too. Uh, one you short is, is uh, SFF TA-1006. Uh, you can go get that. Uh, it's, it's completely standardized. It's, it's a shorter version of the one you long. And probably best used when you have a CPU that you need a few drives uh, and you need them to be sort of front panel pluggable in, in some cases. So uh, this could be used for various other purposes, but, uh, and you saw in the Intel presentation at the beginning, uh, they're standardizing on one U long and one U short. Uh, other drive manufacturers are sort of holding back and saying, well, let's see what the market is for these things. <laughs> but you can influence that by going and telling them you want one of these form factors. Any questions on the one U short? All right. Yeah. Wait for the mic, because I can't hear you. Uh, we we know the ruler have a have a shell have a shell on it, so each server we can choose a different vendors the ruler, but the short one have no sh shell, and no lock, no 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 light. So maybe you must have a carrier on on it. So, you mean, are you talking about an enclosure around it? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and there's there's an enclo you can add an enclo enclosure around it. Doesn't matter. What we care about is the actual dimensions of the board. Yeah, I know. 
from the from the drive manufacturer you get a bare board but i think different uh, vendor maybe create a different uh... one you short uh, is intended to sort of be along the lines of the m2 you typically don't get an enclosure around your m2 either right you stick it on, on the motherboard and usually sort of an orthogonal connection, right? Yeah. Well, you can take that and make it front panel accessible as well. But, but I think that's, that, that's, that's quite a difference with a, with, a short, with a long and a short. There is. But <laughs> it could be that a one U long could actually be a carrier card for multiple one U shorts. So you put the one you shorts into the carrier card. Go look at the Project Olympus booth. They'll pull one of those out. They'll pop the covers on. You can see how uh, M2s can fit into those uh, one you longs today. And that's kind of what one you short was targeted at. Make sense? Thank you, thank you. All right. Any other questions on long or short in one you? <laughs> and then the, the uh, third series of EDSF specs is available as FFF, SFFTA 1008. And this one's called 3-inch media. And actually, there's uh, four different sort of versions. There's long and short, and then there's wide and thick. <laughs> I mean, wide and thin. So uh, single width is 7.5 millimeters. Double width is 16.8 millimeters. And, uh, and the idea here is either <clears throat> you have a 2U chassis and you can put them vertically, or you, you, you put them horizontally into whatever size chassis. And it uh, looks like you could fit about you know, five of these across in a rack, depends on the rack size. Um, and so what you end up with is sort of roughly the same dimensions as the original hard drive cases, the, the old U.2 cases that we know and love, right? So this is for existing systems that maybe need to just update the connector. Um, this might be the way to go. Uh, we're getting requirements from folks like HPE and Dell for there's, excuse me, some enterprise level, maybe not hyperscalers, but enterprise level uh, systems that would use the three inch media. Any questions on that? Now the nice thing about all these form factors I just mentioned is they all use the same connector or maybe you should call it a, a series of connectors because uh, depending on how many lanes you want to go to that device, uh, you can either use a connector with four lanes, a connector with eight lanes, or a connector with 16 PCI lanes. The three inch media form factor right now is the only form factor that's going to use that 16 PCI lanes. And a four, a by four card can fit in a 16 by 16 connectors, it's just that leftmost set of pins that it fits into. Does that make sense? So this is a standard. It's called SFFTA 1002 from the, the SNEA.org website. Uh, and it's already kind of, we think it's kind of future proof for both Gen 4 and Gen 5 PCIe speeds as well as it's been looked at by the Gen Z folks uh, for possible Gen Z use in the future as well. So this is, you've seen the 8639 connector, it works for SAS, SATA, and PCIe. This is just PCIe and maybe Gen Z going forward. <coughs> but it, a lot of stuff is gonna be based off of this. Questions on the connector? All right, and then there's something called NGSFF. And NGSFF was a proposal for a form factor based on sort of an expanded M.2. Hyperscalers love these M.2s. One of the reasons is that it's a poor man's NVM set. It's a, it's a small enough uh, drive, at this point anyway, that you can have uh, one for each of your apps in a huge box. 
um, once the, uh, the IO determinism is implemented in some of these drives, you won't need that sort of isolation via separate controller kind of scheme. So um, the goal, uh, and this is still very early days, they're talking about it, they're voting on it in JEDEC, um, but the goal was that you could, you could create a, a connector and maybe some host electronics as well that will allow you to stick one of these cards in or an M2 card. Um, you can also screw that up royally, so <laughs> that's why there's so much controversy around it. Um, but uh, it was targeted at sort of the same space as the M2 cards. Uh, questions on NGSFF? So, uh, those initiatives are changing the storage industry. Uh, those of us that make these sort of devices uh, <clears throat> are going to be responding to some of those requirements. It should also help some of the tier two database or uh, data center customers uh, following those uh, hyperscaler practices as well. And, uh, and I suggest you get involved. Uh, George has uh, OCP storage call every month. And uh, SNEA and DMTF and others uh, are, are working on this stuff. Are there other initiatives that uh, people want to make us available? Or? No. Any questions? All right. Thank you very much.